Want a design like Sarah? Today is reveal day. She'll tell you what you need. So what do we need? And what's next? Next on our list is... And don't forget... And the most important thing you can do for a room... You gotta watch this. What is everybody's favorite day? Transformation and reveal day, right? Well, for some of us it might also be demo day, but there was no demo here at Langdon Hall Country House Hotel and Spa. Today is just reveal day, and I'm excited to share this latest makeover with you because I'm gonna be sharing a list of things you can do to achieve dramatic results at home. This is a no reno makeover. And in my view, that is one of the best types of makeover you can do. You take an existing space, you embrace it for what it is, and then you invest everything you've got to find the potential and reveal an entirely new result. One of the most impactful things we did here was paint. You know how much I love paint. You know I am always singing the praises of paint and that is nowhere more impactful than right here today in this moment. Well, honestly, I think it's always that impactful. I think paint is that impactful thing in every single room and it's a game changer. So we started with a room that was a bit drab, a bit tired, and what it really needed was an infusion of energy. I feel energized just being in this room now that it's done. That could be partly the excitement of the fact that it is done, but it's also the transformation that happens when you add color. And if you're thinking about how do I do that? How do I achieve that? What I want you to think about is how do you want the room to feel? What is it that this room is about? And from the beginning, you will remember if you've been watching this process evolve, you know that this was about achieving the feeling of a conservatory. So this was designed as a place where you could come for high tea, enjoy the afternoon sunshine, sit on wicker furniture. And so what I wanted to do was look outside to bring the outside in and to make it feel leafy and green all the time. Because you might be thinking right now, Sarah, <laughs> there's nothing leafy and green outside. It's winter. I know, it's winter outside, but here's the magical trick of decorating. Inside, I can feel like I am in a true garden room. How did we do that? Because it's all about the color. Green is the order of the day. Have you noticed? I'm dressed in green too. So first we started with a color for the walls. Then what I wanted to do was put a half tint of that same color on the ceiling. If you're thinking about employing this trick at home, here's my tip for you. Always try to make sure you have a break in between the walls and ceiling. We've achieved that thanks to the existing trim and we have beams running through the ceiling. So there's a break between the lighter half tint that's on the ceiling and the full tint of the color that's on the walls that highlights it and makes you realize that these are in fact two different intensities. That's how you get maximum impact from your paint. So there's a good tip to follow. How else do you achieve a dramatic result? Furniture. Furniture is key to any transformation, but we were on a budget here. And in my view, budget is never a dirty word. It's always something you need to embrace. You need to acknowledge it. You need to embrace it. You need to accept the challenge and then you need to go for it. So you know what we did? We had so much fun shopping online. We went vintage treasure hunting and we found all sorts of awesome finds. We needed to have maximum seating in here because this is a hotel. So we found three different sets of rattan furniture that were for sale, different vendors, slightly different styles, all similar price points. You're thinking, Sarah, how do you know what goes together? For me, I'm always looking for a linking element. So what you will notice is I didn't mix wicker and rattan. Everything I bought was rattan. So two of the sets I found had a very similar profile to the arms, but they had a different back design. That didn't matter to me. Also, you know what didn't matter? They were distinctly different colors. I decided to just ignore that because I figured they'd just be painted and then they'd be unified and they would live happily ever after together in the same room. Then I found another set of six chairs. Now, while this didn't have the same arm style, the linking element in this set of six chairs was that it had a square pattern on the back that mimicked the same square pattern that was on one of the other sets of chairs that would end up being painted. Are you following along? Here's what I'm telling you. 
you always want to have some sort of a linking element that connects it all together. I decided to leave one set of the chairs in natural rattan just because I really appreciated how that could help tie to the existing element in the room because you always have to work with what is existing. What is existing in this room is the natural light oak floors. There was no way we were gonna be changing these. This was a quick makeover, lickety split, to transform this space into something fresh and new. And you always know that I need there to be a linking element. These natural rattan chairs help make the light oak floor make sense. Make sense to you, makes sense to me. Okay, that's the story about the rattan, but it can't be all rattan all the time. When you're thinking about your rooms at home, you wanna think about how you balance all the different functions in your room and what you want it to do for you because your rooms have a job to do. They need to work for you for how you want to use them. So in the case of this space, some people will come to dine, some people will come to lounge. Well, if you've come to lounge, I've introduced four swivel lounge chairs. And what's great about these is that they are cozy, they are comfy, they are low, they wrap around you in the back so that you can just kind of snuggle right into them, and then they swivel. You wanna look out to the view down the long driveway and see who's coming and going, totally fine. You want to swivel into the room and put your back to the sun, that also works. A tete-a-tete -a -tete grouping is always, always high on my priority list. Maybe you've got an awkward space at home and it's long and narrow. How do you set that up? Well, I always think it needs to have a set of different groupings. So don't try and make one big grouping. Try and create unique little areas, little destinations that do slightly different things. And that is how I would encourage you to tackle a big, long space. When it comes to floor coverings, if you've got an awkwardly shaped room, you might be thinking, how am I ever gonna find a rug that is exactly the size I need. Well, you don't have to find one. In this case, we ordered three rugs, the same size from the same supplier, and we just lined them up. And what rugs do is they help anchor the different areas and they help define it, they add softness. But here's what I always look to, it brings pattern, it brings color. If you're thinking about where to start in a color scheme, you can start with a piece of pattern fabric, you can start with a fabulous piece of original art, you can start with a rug. Where you get your inspiration doesn't matter to me. I just want you to be mindful of the patterned colorful elements you're working with to bring them all together. Rooms that work for me are rooms that make you feel you want to travel through them, that you can easily navigate around whatever furniture is in place. You've heard me say this before, time and time again. I'm not a huge fan of big, blocky pieces of furniture. And you'll see that is evident and in full play here today. Every single seat that we have brought in has a rounded back, gentle curves. What does this do? Well, first of all, it says to you, the guest, come in, sit down, make yourself feel comfortable. But the other key thing is, the reason why I like to use pieces that have that sort of rounded back is because they feel soft when you navigate around them. You're not walking into a sharp, square block. Okay, what else did we do? Oh, lighting. I can't say enough about lighting. Good lighting makes a room, bad lighting breaks a room. And we started out with some lovely, authentic vintage fixtures in this room, but you know what they weren't doing? They weren't providing enough light. So they needed to be changed and they needed to be changed with something practical. What we've introduced now is outdoor inspired lighting, lanterns for this outdoor inspired room, a garden conservatory. And the key here is if you want less is more when it comes to maintenance, try and use lanterns that have no glass, no dusting, no foggy glass, and instead, what we have is just the frame, which brings some sculptural interest. And then there are four bulbs in each of these lights. Of course, they're on dimmers, but they shine up to illuminate the ceiling. They create a beautiful glow for the entire space. And then for just another extra little hit, we've installed a pair of fun contemporary wall sconces that flank the fireplace. 
What they do is illuminate a pair of demi-loon side tables that are now acting as serving stations for the wait staff. So everything here is about function. If you're thinking about mixing and matching different light fixtures together, here's my tip for you. Make sure they're in the same finish. You can use slightly different design influences here. The sconces look a little bit more industrial, while the lanterns are more exterior inspired, but they link together, they go together, and they work together because they are the same finish. Make sense? Do you like these demi-loon tables that we've turned into serving stations? Well, here's a fun trick. This is a table that we had in storage at the office, and what we decided to do was slice it in half. I thought we could just cut it and then we can cut it right through this piece. We took a round table, we sliced it in half, and then the team here attached them to the walls. So now they act like built-in consoles. How fun is that? Here's a little backstory of what happened. We wanted the tables to sit above the baseboards. There was a little bit of a connection issue. The tables were actually a little short. So the maintenance team here on site at Langdon Hall found a dowel, attached the dowel to the leg, the tables got repainted, the tables are now in place, and who would ever know? This is a DIY delight. Next on our list is, think about the character you are trying to create. What did we want to create here? A garden-inspired room, a conservatory. So what do we need? We need plants, and that means we need lots of them. The gardener happened to be off for a couple days, so we got to go in and poke around in the greenhouse, find some gorgeous plants, and now we've put them in simple terracotta pots, and we've jammed them up on this giant mantle. I think more is more. So instead of just one plant, if you want it to feel garden inspired, if you want to feel like a conservatory, bring in lots of plants. Bring in plants that are easy for you to care for, make sure you water them, and if possible, also try and choose plants that tie in to the mood of what you're trying to achieve. I wanted all the plants to feel fresh. We've chosen to go with a number of variations where the leaves are variegated, so they have both white and green, and I'm always drawn to that variation in shade. I really love a variegated plant. We got a pair of orange trees. Look at these. Don't taste these, because these oranges are so bitter. But every year around Christmas, you can usually buy orange trees and they are fantastic. You have to take care of them, you have to water them often, but let's just talk about the magnificent effect that that zing of color brings to the room, that bit of citrus. Now, if we wanna really talk about color and we really wanna talk about the finishing touch and the most impactful thing and the most important thing you can do for a room, add some art. That's where the color comes in. So. The funny thing is, this was a finishing touch. Sometimes you've seen me pick the artwork first and then design an entire room around it. Well, I happen to know an artist whose work I am a huge fan of. Oh my gosh. And her name is Grace. And she came in today, on the last day, on the finishing day, and she brought me three paintings. I don't want to hang this on the wall here, Grace. I want to take this one home. <laughs> and this is really serendipity because she only had four paintings available. And I said, okay, bring me these three paintings. And these three paintings are now hanging on the walls and they look super amazing. Oh, wow. They bring the room to life. So whatever your taste preferences are, whatever your color preferences are, just never forget the high impact, dramatic results, and the soulful touch that original art brings to your home. This is the finishing touch, it's the cherry on top, and the amazing thing about it is, because this is a hotel, these pieces are on display as though it's a gallery and they're all available for purchase. So if someone buys them, they'll be replaced by something else. And I think so much of what I do when I think about design is design and creativity is an evolution and it can always change. So I think it's fun to think about how this will change and how this will evolve as the art changes and moves into other people's homes. That's the list of my tips, my ideas, and how I transformed this conservatory space here at Langdon Hall Country House Hotel. Want to see more? You can head to my website and check out the makeover articles. You'll find sources for everything we've used, or you could just come here in person. Have a stay, go to the spa, 
have a meal? Check it out. Make sure you let me know in the comments below what you think.